Good morning guys and welcome to an amazing episode of Dirtish. I am really really excited for this episode. We have the one and only. <laughs> the amazing. And Tisar. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Dirtish. Thank show. you. It's you, an honor to be with you. We are in Tisar's house, which is beautiful. I've seen it on camera. Look at those. And we met the three dogs she has. Yeah. Uh, we just met Lightning. Yes, in Maria, we have a donkey, two tortoises, three dogs, lots of worms. Did you hear that, guys? Lots of worms. <laughs> lots of worms. <laughs> lots of worms. <laughs> wow, look at this. So, what do they do exactly? They're good for aerating the soil. I love how you get your hands dirty. Look at that. Yeah, why not? Guys, this is a design in action. Look at that. Like my hands? Look? Pretty, look? <laughs> pretty hands, pretty hands. Well, that was Worms Education 101, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. This is her lab. Hey, Mike, you're going to open this. <laughs> <laughs> How long has this been fermenting? Oh, not much, not much. Oh, January 2nd. Kombucha is um, ferment mm -hmm. with tea and sugar. Okay. Okay. Those are the two main ingredients. Yeah. I use sometimes a blend mm -hmm. of different teas. Look at that one. Look at that one. Yeah. If I give it to people, they like it and then they can't get hold of it. So I'm just putting normal Moroccan tea or tea back and then they'll get used to the taste. Great idea. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Welcome to the Derdish Show, a place to sit back, relax, and enjoy a good conversation. Welcome again, guys, to the Derdish Show with the one and only. Uh, <laughs> I am so excited for this episode. She just took us on a tour. She showed us her worms, yeah. three beautiful dogs, lightning. The donkey. The donkey. The infamous, the famous donkey. Yes, lightning is a donkey. She has a beautiful donkey right there in the backyard. And we went to the kombucha lab where yeah. she showed us all the different types of the kombuchas and the juice and how it's made. Yeah. So next week you're going to do a, a... Yeah, Saturday. Saturday at Feed Market, I'm going to do a kombucha making workshop. So after you started uh, telling people about kombucha, how were the responses? Uh, the majority loved it and like, they kept asking, what's kombucha? What's kombucha? And I've been doing kombucha actually for many years. It's not my... I, I started about 15 years ago, I think. Wow. Yeah, and I was off. I did for a couple of years and then I was off. And then I went back. I did a fermentation workshop with someone. Mm -hmm. And uh, she taught us to ferment vegetables and do kombucha. In terms of pickles, then? Eh? Yeah. So okay. you ferment it with water and uh, salt, not with uh, vinegar. Yeah. And it has, it, it has all the beneficial bacteria. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that. And then I went back to making kombucha. And I enjoy it. I like it. You either like it or you don't. And yeah. then I discovered Jun, so I ordered a Jun Scooby. Mm -hmm. And I started doing that. So now I have a whole lab. I saw the lab. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the lab. There's names. It is not kombucha. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, listen, for me, if you're going to order something, order it well. Because I, I came to order the vessel. And they said, you can have it personalized. I said, oh my God, I love my name. <laughs> I'm so narcissistic in my name. I like it everywhere. So I said, okay, Intosar is blue. And then Intosar's magic. And I think my third one coming now is Intosar's potions. <laughs> what goes inside? <laughs> so, they, it, these small things just bring me happiness and joy. I'm so sure. I just go for them. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. They're colorful and beautiful. It's all inside. <laughs> They're in the corner. I just trying each one of them. Yeah. I'll take this one out. And one of them was about to explode. Um, let's talk about the benefits of kombucha. So when you say good bacteria. Well, Every fermentation, when you if you think of 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 the old days when they used to ferment, uh, al achar, it's a fermentation, right? Mm -hmm. And we used to ferment a lot of vegetables and whatever we had, we ferment. And people used to eat a lot of fermented foods. Now we don't. And fermented foods, if you think of even uh, blue cheese, that's fermented cheese, mm -hmm. kimchi, um, yogurt, these are all ferments. And fermented food is good for your stomach because you're for your guts because it has beneficial bacteria. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And that's why I, I take kombucha. My sister said it, ha it has too much acidophilus and she doesn't need it. So she says um, she needs uh, something with a B. Mm. I just like my kombucha. I'll continue drinking it. And uh, some people use um, yeah, the pickles and the bacteria. It's been around for ages. I forgot yeah. to ask you a question. But some people use the kombucha for... It's, it's originated in China, I think. I think so. I think they, I mean they they still don't say you, every place says something different but I think it was Chinese. Mm. Nice. So we're going to do a workshop this weekend. Yeah. That's going to teach everyone how to do kombucha from scratch at yeah. home. Yeah. And what do they need? So they need tea, sugar and the scooby. The scooby. And which is um, the bacteria mm -hmm. or the fungus and you need an already made um, they call it the 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 soul, I think it's called soul, I'm not sure, which is already made kombucha. So it's like a bit tart because that accelerates the, the fermentation. Okay, so, so scooby, tea, sugar, and the love for kombucha. Yeah. And I noticed that you practically grow everything you consume. Oh, I wish I could. No, we yeah. don't. No, no, no. I'd love to say we do. That'll be a dream of mine, but not yet. I remember the salad you made in the... Yeah, in the I'll take you outside. Dinner. I'll, I'll, yeah? I'll take you outside and you can pick the leaves and eat them. It's so much fun. That's amazing. Your garden, you can feel the energy as soon as you walk in. Yeah. There's crystals around, there's beautiful animals. Even Matt is nodding his head as I'm yeah. telling you, saying the and, and And really, the, 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 the team working here, the staff are just so beautiful. I'm so blessed. Have you always been? No. Like this? No, no. No, no. I, I discovered a letter I wrote at a workshop about, I think about 2007, 2008, so about 10 years. And I went to this workshop and, they, and, 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 and he, at the end he said, write something you would like to manifest. And I discovered this letter about a year ago. I don't know how I discovered it. I can't find it. So I don't know where it's gone. I'm, I was meant to discover it and then it was meant to get lost. And I had written, I would like to have a house full of family, friends, and laughter. So obviously I didn't have it. I, w I was quite unhappy at the time. I was lonely and, um, and it's like, I think it's normal. And then I found the letter, I'm thinking, no. I wasn't there a few years ago. So I worked on, on accepting life as it is and, and changing myself so people change. Mm. I, I'm more empowered than I used to be and I'm also much nicer and kinder. And that comes from, I remember before the interview you told me the four things, it's thank you. Oh, that's one of the things, I do a lot of things. Yeah. I do a lot of things because whenever there's something that I, uh, I feel will help me transform, uh, I do it. And then I decide, yeah, it works. Yes, no, it doesn't. So uh, that was Ho'oponopono. And it's, um, it's um, a, a Hawaiian. Well, someone reinvented or uh, simplified it, but it's basically you take responsibility for everything that goes on in your life. Mm -hmm. And you ask the divine, you ask your higher self, whatever you want to call it. But the, for me, God and the universe and the divine and my higher self, to me, they're all one. I believe in, in oneness. And so you ask, uh, you, you, you repeat one or all four phrases and you see which one resonates with you more. If you don't like it, you repeat it more. And it's, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me and thank you. And if you only do I love you, plenty. But it's, we have to forgive ourselves for how we think life is and how people react and how we in a way, unknowingly hurt ourselves. Like, I'll give you an example. Two days ago, I was very sick. And um, my very good friend, even though she knew I was very sick, didn't ask about me. So I was really upset with her. And I sat all last night really angry at her. And then I thought, no, no, let me own it. Why am I angry at me? What did I do that I'm angry at her? And then I realized is I've allowed her to do that many times. 
when I when I need her, she's in her own world. So I've decided no more. So once I owned it, I was able to change it. I can't change her, but I can change me. And that's what, for me, makes my life easier because it's not about what people do to me. It's what I do to myself, what I allow to be done to myself. How will I change? I'm going to change and she's going to change. Because that's the only consistent thing. I agree. I love that. I love that. So instead of victimizing, playing the victim, Oh, I played the victim for a long time. Taking ownership. Oh my God, the victim thing. Yeah. I used to feel so sorry for myself. It's like the whole, everyone wants to hurt me. And I look at it, and, and for a long time, I used to be really angry at myself for that. But again, that's abuse. Mm -hmm. And now when I feel it, I say, oh my God, that is so cute. Okay. <laughs> that is so cute and so, okay, yeah. we'll stop it now. Okay, how much do you need? An hour, two, a week? You know, once you're over, just get out of your head and go into your heart and do something about it. I love that. Mm. I love that. How much do you need? Okay, how much do you need now? Yeah, I give myself, I give myself space. So to feel it. Of pushing the emotions away, emotion yeah. and then, but is that what Well, it, it depends. Sometimes it needs a long time and sometimes it doesn't. Like now when I'm in the victim mode, I literally don't stay for more than an hour. It used to take me months. Mm. Like mm. the world is so cruel. My family can do something. You know, mm. our, everyone around us gives us lessons. Yes. And when they do, we can either acknowledge it, embrace it, and be empowered by it or resent it and feel it's happening to us, not for us. Wow, mm. wow, that's very, very interesting. I mean, that makes sense, especially, and I see a lot of people take small things too personally. It's painful. And it's painful. Painful. And it all goes back to their selves. So you're saying that we're actually just reflecting ourselves with other people. Exactly. In other people. When, when we, when we, um, I, I, about myself, when I started taking responsibility for everything that happened, I became more empowered. And responsibility doesn't mean that if someone does something bad, I return it with bad. That's not responsibility. Responsibility is if they do something I don't like, what is it I have to do to stop that? And stop my violence and I, and I give back violence because that's self-abuse. Self-abuse. Yeah. Because they're, they're giving me a lesson. And if I don't learn the lesson... It's going to keep coming back. And stronger and more painful. And I learned that. It's like, Jack! Okay, you don't get it. Jack! You don't get it. And then like, it's like a kick in your face. So I've learned to, as soon as I get the first slap, now, okay, 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 okay. I love you, Ansar. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's calm down. Let's go into your heart. And, and let's see what we can do. And sometimes it takes me a while, like last night, it took me a while because I felt very hurt. And then I realized it was, I felt I hurt myself by allowing this to happen for so long. And I thought it's very interesting. And I couldn't sleep. I was just so weak because I was in the revenge mode. And I'm thinking, oh my God, there I go abusing myself. This is so painful. But I was in this cycle. And then I'd go to my heart, put a big smile on my heart, and then I'd go back. And then at the end, I said, okay, okay, out of your head. So I started getting out of my head, feeling my hands, feeling my feet. Mm, bodying yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feeling my yeah. body, feel, you know, like, literally, I just get out of my mind. Mm. Because I find when I'm in my mind, I'm small. And when I'm in, in bigger mind, I'm much more bigger. Mm and much more wiser and much more kinder and loving and gentler and everything that comes with it. But here's a pretty interesting question. I mean, what makes our mind, I love that you said it's abusing to ourselves. Oh yeah. Like it's, we're actually hurting ourselves by victimizing and, and being- Because we're disempowering ourselves, because we're not, we're not learning that this is something happening for us. This is how we grow by learning these small lessons, because you know, imagine going from uh, uh, kindergarten to primary school to high school to university, if you don't learn the lesson, and it's, you know, some people say, oh, um, um, like there's, you know, God, I'm not scared of God. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one thing that changed. Once I start, stopped being scared of God 
and, and, and knowing that God's all loving, I stopped being scared of me. God is with you instead of... Exactly. Um, so when, when I'm in my small mind and I'm, I'm, I'm not learning the lesson, and the lessons for me, mm-hmm. I grow with these lessons. And when I don't want to learn them, I stay small. And when I stay small, I hurt myself more. Thank you. That really, really resonates with me and it does make sense. I completely agree. So every situation that we're put in in life, there's something there for us to get out of. Every single thing. Life is a mirror of what's inside of us. And it's love it way. or hate it, it's a mirror. So you have to love it. You have to love it. You have to love it. You have no choice but to love it. And how do you see um, youth uh, being affected by constantly being inside their heads and not being able to just take responsibility for where they are. Do you think it's something that a lot of people feel or? I think they all have to learn their lessons. I mean, I see my daughters, my younger daughters, and they're still learning their lessons, but they, aren't they a reflection of me too? So when my daughter is self-abusive because she's inside her head and she's quite vicious to herself i said okay there's still a part of you i'm sorry you haven't dealt with and she's doing that for you so i i realized the nicer and gentler i am to her the nicer and gentler she is to herself and it's very tricky i mean i don't have kids but when i see my family self-abusing themselves it's so hard to tell yourself that they are it's their their story It's their story. So you work on yourself. It's got nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. I would work on myself. Like when I see my daughters doing something I don't approve of, because I know it's hurting them, smoking, or I think, you know, "Eh, they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Let me work on on accepting them for what they are and who they are, and they will accept themselves and and they won't need to smoke to feel good. It's tricky. I mean, I remember hearing a guru who said, if you think that you're enlightened, try spending a weekend with your family. Exactly. Oh my God, it is, it's like slap, slap, (laughs) slap, slap. And you either take it and you say, okay, like a slap, the the thing that most hurts in a slap is when you resist, right? Mm. If I come to slap you and you go with my hand, Mm -hmm. no pain. I love that. Yeah. So when there's a slap, just go woof with it. And it's like, whoa, this is so cute. This is so cute. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to start saying that. Yeah. That's a very interesting way to put it. And don't think of it as pain. Think of it as a lesson. And take on the empowerment or the empowering lesson. Don't say it's at me. It's for me. What am I gaining from it? Sometimes it'll take you a month to realize, sometimes a year, and sometimes within two days. There's a reason for everything. Like literally everything, there's a reason. If I, even if I don't like it, I always think, God is so much wiser than I am, and he sees a bigger picture. And there I am in my little ego thinking, this should not happen, war shouldn't happen, death shouldn't happen. But isn't that being really small? Yeah, who am I to say this? Exactly. And it's unfair. Okay, unfair to to my thinking. In the bigger context, like if a lion eats a, a deer or a rabbit, we can sit there and say, it's unfair. Or... Yeah, but that's the circle of life at the end. The lion needs it, to feed its babies. And it's only a circle of life, yeah. you know. There's there's a bigger picture. Mm, I love that. And um, so working on yourself is way more important than... Because we were talking about health and how the mind really affects the body before shooting. Mm. And how important is working on yourself these days? Okay. Now... To be very um, strict is quite aggressive, right? It's quite punishing. Mm -hmm. So I just eat whatever I want. But what I realize is the more I allow myself to, 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 to eat whatever I want, the less I eat what I doesn't go with me. The less you. Not the other way around. It's like I used to punish myself by saying, oh, you should be a vegetarian. You should be this. No shoulds. No shoulds. Once I stopped the shoulds, 
things just flowed. No shoulds. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you think of it, you know, sorry, they're going to hate me for this. Vegans are the most vicious of people. Like, everyone should be vegan. Okay, maybe for you, but I like meat. Yeah. Allow me to do to eat what I want. I don't stop you from being vegan. Except and, and and it's it, it, it's a self-inflicting pain. You're right. Yeah. Because when they feel this way towards others, their cortisol goes up, but that's just going to hurt themselves. Yeah, because they want to be righteous. But isn't that small mind? Mm. Mm. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they're extremists in every field. I mm. think they agree with you. And only the ones who, see, if, if they're happy being a vegan, I, uh, that's fine. It's when they want to impose it on everyone. And they think of the injustice in the world. It's a form of self-abuse. Yeah, I know people who are vegan and happy with it. And I'm fine, but it's not against me. Yeah. Or meat eaters, and they're happy with it. It's not like you don't have to eat meat every day. They don't impose their ideas on me. Yes. Because that is, in a way... Um, disempowering themselves by thinking the world should be as their small mind is. And when I say small mind, is like there's a higher mind and there's a lower mind. So the small mind to me is ego. Mm -hmm. And it should be a fair world, but a fair world to who? No such thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think it has a lot to do with their confidence. I mean, when you're not completely convinced about something, you're constantly trying to convince and fight every conversation but if somebody's really convinced that what they're doing is okay they don't need to no. preach they don't need to go not at all and i heard the saying that said they think everybody's is not a bit and the fat exactly every child is that hat on a body yeah like everybody does uh, do I, I know vegans that are very strict and they dislike humans way more than yeah. they should that, that that's again it's a form of self-abuse hmm. see their abuse is not towards me because i will see them they can preach and then I'll go and eat meat. Yeah. But they're dying on the inside because they're, you know, it's like circle of, of anger. It's like, it's just let go. And, you know, I, I told you that for many years I did a lot of um, work on, on my meridians and I did a lot of supplements and a lot of restricted food and seven years. Candida. I did all of these uh, for seven years. Nothing worked. And then I worked on here. Three years. Things balanced. So once I started working on here, letting go of all the do's and don'ts, uh, should and shouldn't, the abuse. I, I keep saying abuse because we abuse ourselves by giving ourselves a lot of lists. And once I stop, stopped the self-abuse, everything stopped working. I love when you said we abuse ourselves by giving ourselves a lot of lists. Yeah. That is beautifully said. That's so true. So it's just literally allowing yourself to go through life without yeah. having to. Because when I'm very strict in my diet and I eat something that I'm not... You feel so eat. guilty. Yes. Like seriously, why? Yeah. See, that guilt is self-abuse. Why do you feel guilty? Yeah. <laughs> Like, if I want to have a, a piece of chocolate cake, I will eat it. With a smile, before and after. It doesn't matter. I just enjoy it. And I don't eat chocolate cake. I barely ever eat chocolate cake. But I feel like it, I'll have it. But the less I am strict, the less I'll eat it, which is opposed to everything we've been taught. It's like a paradox. Yeah. It's like a paradox. Very interesting how we see these things. And it's something very tricky and something a lot of people can relate to because I think self-abuse and self-guilt or victimizing ourselves yeah. is something. But what confuses me is what makes these things natural? What makes our brains take certain things and make them negative? Is this part of nature? Are we supposed to feel guilty or victimize ourselves? It's very tricky, you know, it's like a philosophical thing when you think about it. As humans, are we supposed to reach a point of evolution where we will self-actualize and be self-aware? Again, it's it's what your journey is. If you see a lot of it, then look inside of yourself. That's it. Don't look on the outside, look on the inside. Why do you see so much of it? If you were asking me, I have the nicest staff at home. I never had the nicest staff. And now when I have someone who's, and I haven't had one for a while, who really 
makes it very hard for me to be kind. I look at myself, okay, what am I learning? What is it that person's in my life to, for me to learn? That's it. So whenever I see something on the outside I don't like, I just look inside of me. Yes. And sometimes avoiding certain people are just the solutions of them. Sometimes we need to be intact to be able to be strong enough to face them. Like my family, sometimes you have to sort of withdraw, collect yourself, be strong enough, and then go back. But mm. to not withdraw and not to go back is, 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 you're not learning the lesson. You're running away from it. Mm. But, you know, sometimes like you have to go back and, and sort of uh, and then really work on yourself and learn to accept and love yourself no matter what they say. Because what they're saying is a reflection of who you are or what you think you are. So they're, they're just pointing out things that are inside of you and it pains us because we believe it. If they were saying, like, if someone comes to you and says you're a pink hippopotamus, if you get angry, there's something wrong with you, but you laugh. Okay, but if they say something that you know is real, yeah, you get very offended. Wow. Yeah. That is, I love that. That's very true. So once you're offended by something, go inside and think, why do I believe it? How can I let go of the belief? Mm. And work on that. Not about what they said, but why do I react to it? So when someone says something to me and I react now, I think, oh my God, I believe what they say. Okay, I have to work on me. That is so true because it does make sense. I mean, you could sit in a gathering and somebody says something and only one person gets offended. Yeah, because they believed it. Because there's something in that statement that made them angry. Yeah, they believed it. Wow. It only catches if there's if it resonates with what your beliefs are. When I used to do coaching, we used to, this, we used to do this with our clients to help them identify their values. So when it comes to you being angry or agitated in a situation, like if somebody lies to you and you get angry, what's the opposite of lying? Honesty. So honesty is one of your values. Mm -hmm. So if somebody steps on one of your values, you somehow get agitated. Or it's not enough strong value that they have to highlight it to you. See, I, I always think everyone's there to teach you a lesson. Mm. So if someone like lies to you, just go inside and think, where am I lying to myself? Why do I get offended by what they've done? And I remember Paul Ekman, it's like this lie detector in the FBI. Mm. They asked him a question in the interview. He said, you catch people lying. You're very good at this. Mm. Of course you've caught your kids mm. lying. What do you do when you catch your kids lying? He said, I see you why they're lying and yeah. try to change it. Yeah. Instead of actually and it's lying. Okay, think of why we lied. I'll tell you why I lied. It's to defend myself. So when I'm on a defense, my offense is to lie. Mm -hmm. Now when someone asks me a question I don't want to lie, it's painful sometimes. But the more, the less you lie, the less people lie to you. It's, it's a very interesting life mm -hmm. that like I see my life and it's like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And I think it's normal so, that everything runs so smoothly. And every once in a while I get check. Okay, wake up, one more thing to learn. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. Right? It's it. But that's why we grow. Yeah. As soon as you as soon as you think you gotta figure it out, life will throw you a curveball. Yeah, or think of it as the one more step to enlightenment mm. or one more step to joy mm. or love or whatever one wants to call it. What do you think of joy and happiness? A lot of people treat being happy and being joyful. Is it something consistent, do you believe, or is it okay to feel sad sometimes? Okay. Again, if I, if I go back to when things happen i don't like i feel sad right mm. but if i think of there's a bigger picture and i just stay with the present moment i don't feel joy but i don't feel the pain or if i do it doesn't last long so joy should be the natural state we're in mm -hmm. but we sort of get out of the pendulum it's like we go and to get to there is really good because you're not reacting 
to joy or sadness. It's like, it's here. I love that metaphor. Just try to... Yeah, not have extremes. Mm. You can't have extreme joy, okay? And then extreme pain. Or when you get to a stage of enlightenment, for me, you start being balanced. So both are okay. Mm. Mm. So I, I sometimes meet people that are a bit maybe extremist when it comes to they're very angry or they're very happy. Yeah. And it's just hard for them because they, I feel like they're just being thrown into these both sides without them even having any choice or control over it. Yeah. My star sign is a Virgo. Mm -hmm. My ascendant is a Pisces. And they're on the opposite end of the of the horoscope so complete opposite in character mm -hmm. and so uh, pisces are creative are playful they don't care and they, they like to have fun and virgos are quite disciplined quite self-abusive but uh, but um have um uh, confidence and have um what's the word um they want to achieve their achievers mm -hmm. okay and so for a long time i was either very childish or very uh, abusive and, and very straight, you know, and, and compart compartmentalized. And so I used to go from one to the other, angry, giggly, angry, giggly. And now I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm getting to a balance where I giggle, but I don't go to the anger. By, by giggle out of true joy, not... Um, fake joy if I want to call it that Which and, is, and true joy is is it just to be in just to be okay with what's happening it's like when something's funny it's funny when it's not it's not when something's happy it's happy when it's not it's not I don't want to change it mm. and when you say that um, something is very happy and something is very sad is it something that you can realize in the moment or does it take you time to actually it's taking me less and less time. So it used to take me years. Now it takes me days, weeks maximum. But it doesn't take me long. And it might be that I'm logicalizing it, but I'm okay with it. And it's not apathy, which is sometimes we go into an apathetic state and we really don't care and we're sort of shutting the world. It's I... I uh, look at the, 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 the beauty in everyone. It's, I was with um, a trainer and uh, she was working with very sexually abused uh, people. And I said, how can you take it? She said, I look at their soul and I look at how strong they are to be sitting in front of me surviving. And thinking, oh my God, why do I pity them? I shouldn't be pitying, I should be thinking, oh my God, look, how we're, look where they've come. I should be in awe. And that, I think, was one of the pivotal points in my life, is to be in awe of everyone not so feel sorry for them. Yes. I, I think that we only go through certain things and others don't because we can take it. Yeah. And it's, it's something that somebody told me five, six years ago, and that thought just stuck with me. Like, yeah. You know how when people pass by your life and they, later down the line, you know that they pass by for a reason. So yeah, always. Nuggets. Always. For that little small thing. So I went to your office and I met your amazing team and family. There. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Seriously, the yeah, color, they, the energy, everybody. Yeah. They're just so loving. Yeah. So how do you create such a beautiful environment? Well, one thing we do is we, we, we're very kind to each other. And no one's allowed to climb on anyone's shoulder and no one's allowed to backstab. And I never hear complaints. So if someone comes and says, oh, this is what I did. Eight. I said, okay, come eight, come you sit down. Let's solve, solve this. We don't do, back, back. Uh, no, we don't do, we're here to help each other. We're not here to, you know, we don't farq mm. Oh, that's so lame. You get nowhere. And do you think the leadership has a lot to do with creating such an environment? Like, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. And, I, and, and they really are nice people.
they really are. And I think what, what the whole environment has nice energy and it just brings it out in everyone. And when everyone's kind, you help each other, which is really nice, as opposed to sort of tripping each other. Yes, which is in a lot of environments, especially work environments. Well, I don't know. We don't. I've never had it in mind. So I, to me, this is normal. And then people come in, this is not normal. I said, really? Oh, this is so normal where we are. It's like everyone's laughing. Shouldn't they be? <laughs> no, they're not. I said, really? Why not? See, I don't know. Because when you say that the environment brings out the nice, I mean, the kindness in them, is it that way or is it because... The needle that sticks out gets hammered. So when you put a, a not so kind person around ten kind people, he can't not be kind. Because yeah, because out. everyone's helping them out. Yeah. You'll find that everyone's there to help that person out. Yeah. So and if they don't understand it, we'll make sure that they do. And sometimes people just need they can't take it. We've had people come for three days and not able to continue more because it's just such a different environment. And they're used to sort of a different workplace mm. and it doesn't work mm. yeah i think that's very very true I they tend to leave that. Yeah, i can see that yeah. they can't adapt to this because, because they get into this mental habitual states where they constantly want that spike of whether you call it negativity or something that's not oh I, didn't say, I, I won't say negativity i'll say they they they, they cannot take so much kindness because they're still in a state of, of self-abuse mm -hmm. by wanting to be violent to others. Mm -hmm. So when there's a lot of kindness, it just takes them by surprise. And sometimes they can't last long. They run away. They go yeah. back. Or we have to let go of them because they just don't know how things work. Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do, I mean, when it comes to being able to, do you think, read people and get to know them on a personal level before being young? Yeah. We always hire for personality but sometimes even when we do that we sometimes were wrong like we just hired someone checked all his credentials all his uh, um, you know uh, recommendations we spoke to everyone he sounded really perfect he didn't even last a month he lies the whole time it's like why do you need to lie and I'm so sorry you have to let you know why I said because you lie we don't do lying. And is it uh, something that he couldn't not do after doing for so long? I don't know. I just don't yeah. sit and analyze why. Mm. I just know he's not the right character to keep because his, his way is to divide and conquer and he lies. Well, that doesn't work with us, so sorry. And you have intisars, you have cosmology, and you have very and the where and the where and the where yeah all of them are in the same office yeah well same building d different floors and i love the place yeah it is so beautiful i've been talking about it to so many people as yeah. soon as i after meeting yeah. the team and them telling me about it um, can you just share a little bit about what it sure so in the where i started about five and a half years ago almost six coming in march and it was World Kindness Day, so World Happiness Day. It was the wor first World Happiness Day. Um, and we started Nowhere, and the whole ethos for why we started Nowhere is so people, we take positive psychology as a science and we simplify it into tools mm -hmm. that people can use in their everyday life. And that's how we started uh, Nowhere, because f for me, when someone's not positive, they just don't grow. And we started working in the and then we said, oh, let's start working in schools. So we did a sort of um, three, three schools, three teachers where we did affirmations and it worked so well. So then we started working on a curriculum and uh, we have a full fledged curriculum. I think it's the first of its kind, if not in the world and definitely in most countries. And basically what we do is we give them exercises every week that they have to do, no matter what class they're in. It could be PE, it could be physics, it could be biology, it could be Arabic, it could be wow. uh, Dastur, it could be religion. It doesn't matter what the class is. It's just they have to do an exercise for the whole week. And we've had huge change, huge social behavioral change with the students because 
our, our, our exercises are sort of one on top of the other and they have to continue doing them. But we also train the teachers beforehand. So we put the teachers through a four day workshop where they have to implement the exercises on themselves. And that's how they know how to do it. Wow. Where, so they're not preaching, they're actually saying what they felt like and how they went through it. And, um, and we've had shifts in, within the teacher uh, community and within the students. We have 8,000 students this year. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting goosebumps you just yeah. talking about that because I'm thinking of what those teachers are going to take back home with them. Yeah, we've had. Effect. Yeah, we've had. We've had a teacher. We had one exercise that was, and this was part of the club because we have a club and we have um, also an, a notebook. It's not a part of the curriculum, and it was hug some uh, hug everyone today. <laughs> and so she implemented it on her students, mm -hmm. and then she went and implemented it home. And she saw how her students were crying, the, the, the girls were crying, and they were like, oh my God, you know, to feel love, sometimes very emotional. And then she implemented it at home. And she says, her daughters were feeling very emotional. Her daughter was a teacher in a kindergarten or primary school. Her daughter implemented it on the children. Now we're talking high school, and then the daughter's implementing on uh, kindergarten or primary. She said they were crying too. So this need for love, is wow. universal, no matter what age. And when you, when someone feels acknowledged and loved, you get the best out of them. So we have the teacher saying how much her students changed, how much her family changed, and how much her daughter's students changed, just by hugging. I mean, we have the curriculum that is as more things, but this is just simple hug. I completely, completely believe it. Mm. Completely believe it. Like Anna, my dad is not a hugger, my mom is a hugger. Yeah. And I see sometimes how people, when they see somebody getting hugged, they want that. Yeah. We all want to be hugged. We all want to be yeah. hugged deep down inside. And acknowledging somebody is very powerful. Yeah. Like telling somebody, I would like to acknowledge you, actually. Thank you. I really would. Thank you. I think that you are powerful. Yeah. You are loving. Yeah. You are very, very honest. You are very giving. Yeah. And I became. You became. I became. I wasn't like this a few years ago. And it's normal to me now. And people think I've always been like this now. I was victimized, so I victimized myself. And do you know, do you know the Ted Triangle? Um, victim, persecutor, and rescuer? I was within the, the triangle. It, it's a victim, persecutor, and rescuer. So you're either a rescuer, a victim, or a prosecutor, and you go within the three. Mm. And I was like within that circle. Uh, well, triangle three years until I realized to get out of it, you have to be a coach. So you, you're sort of, you empower the victim, but not rescue them. And it's so, so what happens is you don't prosecute them because when you feel, you feel someone, oh my skin, they're such a victim. You want to rescue them, right? Yes. But then you prosecute them in your mind because see, they're too stupid. That's why they're there. That's very true. That's very true. Especially with close people, you really want to help them. You really want yeah. to try to save them, but they... but it's not your job to save them. <laughs> it's your job to 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 work on yourself and to see how you can help them. But you're not there to save them. Once you want to save people, it means you're better than them. I mean, I think the whole thing changed for me when I didn't see myself better than people or less. Because it used to be, I'm better, I'm less better, I'm less. You know, this whole thing. And now I say, okay, I'm not better, I'm less, I'm the same, they, we're all one. It's the comparing part, right? Yeah. Me, I remember I used to, I came to this realization when I was like, I'm going to compare myself to the people that are unfortunate to appreciate what I am. Don't need to. And I'm gonna compare myself to the people that I want to be as inspiring instead of envious. But that's abusive. Too. Yeah. Because what you're doing is you're putting yourself on a pedestal or below, mm. on a pedestal or below. Why don't you think you have as much sorrow as the people you, you look down, you, you're not looked down on, but the, the people you think should have more mm -hmm. and you have abundance like the people you think you want to become. You're abundant. Just stay within the abundance and you see what you're grateful for. So you don't need to compare.
Just whenever yeah. I find I want to compare, I think, oh my God, there I am. Oh my God, there, my competitive side is coming up. Okay, now, cool, calm down. So get out of your head, out of your head. Be grateful. You're right. I'm thinking about when you just said comparing myself, I see people there and people there and I'm just somewhere here. And why do I have to be? We're all there. We're all there. Just stop comparing yourself to exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah, compare. because then you feel less or more. Why are you less or more? Why is, aren't you exactly the same? It, it's not easy. I mean, I'm still going... But it's becoming more and more logical. It's like when I start comparing, oh, okay, and I still do. I get because I, 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 I still have this envy streak in me. It's like, ah, oh. mm. and I say, okay, so I'm in my small mind. Okay, go back to your heart. Okay, be grateful. Be grateful. And then I start being grateful, but from a small mind. And then I catch my mind. I'm still in my small mind. I'm not really in the abundant state. And that's when I realize, okay, I'm still, my, you know, this cute ego of mine is still playing with me. So I, I, I just expand. Mm. And do you think it's when you get into your body more, that's when you actually just forget that. And when you're literally feeling grateful to a point where your body feels a bit tingly, because when you really embody yeah. You really, right? You really feel grateful. You yeah, feel it's tingly. Yeah. It's exactly. It's it's. I, I did a alpha and theta workshops, and I did about seven of them. So now I know when I'm in my head and when I'm out, and it's literally like I'm in my head and I'm small, or I'm out, 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 and I'm big, and I'm connected to everyone. So I'm either lonely inside or I'm part of this whole universe. And it feels so much better when I'm part of the whole universe as opposed to a lonely child in the dark feeling scared and cold. Mm. And that radiates, obviously, yeah. right? Like when you're walking, your frequency is way higher when you're open yeah. instead of when you're closed. Wow. We spoke about so many things today, yeah, I never thought you would come <laughs> We we're gonna talk about a lot of things that I put in my head, and then again, in my head, and you never know what you're gonna talk about. I just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> before the interview, I was like, we're gonna just like, don't tell me, but just go with yeah, it. Yeah, we just go with it. And we did go with it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure. I am so grateful right now. Thank you. Thank you so much for this amazing show. Thank you so much for bringing us into your house, showing us. This beautiful place. Thank you. These beautiful people. These beautiful creatures. Yeah, this beautiful tree. <laughs> this beautiful tree. And everything you shared. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really it was a pleasure. You. It was a real, real pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity and the honor. Inshallah, inshallah. And I can't wait to see you again. Yay! And we'll take care and we'll see you guys later. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>
I guess I'm now too legit to quit. I'm coming out the jacket because we're turning up the heat. I want to see you clapping when you get up out your seat. It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets. I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat. Watch out now. Everybody watch out. Watch out. Baby, I feel real good, and I wish I would. It's gotta be against the law. I look this damn good, baby. Watch out now. Everybody, watch out. Watch out now. Everybody, watch out. Watch out now. Watch out.